Okay, um, I had a student ask me how to solve this problem, um, and it's in my quantitative methods class. And uh, <clears throat> it's a linear programming problem, but the problem is the, the, the objective function, which is profit, you're trying to maximize profit. Well, it has different profit depending on how many units you're selling, right? So for the first, for 60 units, it's going to be $12 profit. For the next 60 units, it's $10. And for in this case, after that, the profit's going to be, um, oh, it's 12, 11, and then 10, and then after. Anyway, so this problem, I'll show you how to set this up. It's just a little different way to set it up. It's kind of interesting how you can do it. So let me go ahead and um, I'm going to go window shift. S is in Sam to get this. And we'll go ahead and paste it into Excel. And I got this problem from this book right here. Introduction for Management Science, Hillier and Hillier. A really good book if you're into quantitative methods and modeling uh, problems for business. Okay, so anyway, this is the problem. And we're going to go ahead and, now, one thing I like to do, there's something kind of new in Excel. Uh, so instead of typing this in manually, Excel's got a way now where you can actually take a screenshot of it and put it in. So, so like if I would take this and try to highlight it and copy it, and I try to paste it in here, Well, actually did a pretty good job. Okay, so we'll just do it that way. Okay, I was going to, another way you could do it, um, if it doesn't allow you to do it, you could uh, take a screenshot. So I go Windows Shift S. Let me get rid of this so it doesn't, so it's not uh, bold. So I go Windows Shift S and just take a screenshot just of this. Right? And so sometimes it, uh, whatever, whatever program it is, it won't let you, won't be able to do it as nicely as we were able to do here. So you could go, you go to data from picture, picture from clipboard. And it's looking at it and then we can just say insert. I didn't check it. So I'm just going to go insert anyway. And it did a fairly good job, right? It's not perfect, but you didn't have to type everything, right? So you could do it that way. I'm going to go control Z. So that, 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 that from picture is fairly new. They used to have it. They used to have it for your phone, but now they've now they got it so it comes over here. But anyway, we saved some typing just by doing that. And then uh, what else do we have? Uh, we have some other things here. Um, we could say uh, profit per unit. We could do something like this. Save some typing. I'm going to put it right here like this. So we could say. For the first uh, 60 units for product one, the profit is $12. And then for the next 60 units, the profit is $11. And then we could say thereafter, we say 120 units on, 121 units, right? We could just say thereafter. The profit is going to be ten dollars per unit, and then for number for the second product, it's uh, thirty-five, and then for the next thirty-five units, we have a different price, and then also thereafter, we have another. We put those prices in. It's uh, seventeen, sixteen, no, eighteen, seventeen, and sixteen. Okay, so so now you see I might have put this in differently th than this, and I'll show you why in a second. But I, I didn't go 35 to 70. I just said the 35 additional units and 60 additional units, right? So I didn't put it. So you can see you might note that I did it a little bit differently, and I'll show you. So we want to find the optimal production plan to maximize profit right okay that's what we want to find so 
Spelled optimal wrong, sorry. Okay. Um, so for a solution, what we can do, we can just set this up. So I'm going to say, first we're going to maximize profit. And we'll say x11 is going to be how many units I ship here. x12 is going to be how many units I ship here. X13 is the number of units I ship here. So it's going to be these six variables. We want to solve for these six variables. So I'll just declare my variables. We can declare them right here. And so we want to calculate the production plan is how many we want, how many units we want to ship of each one of these. And I'll say I'll call this X12, X13, X21 x22 x23 right and so the number of units uh we want to know uh so how much profit is for each one of these units well we know that it's going to be equal to uh this one's going to what i could do i could say i could copy these let me do it this way so equals transpose I'm going to transpose these and it puts them there. And here I can say equals transpose. And I want to transpose these and I'll put them there. Okay. So that's all. So $12 times the number of units I ship here, $11 times the number of units I ship here, and so on. Okay. And now we can put in our, our uh, raw material constraints. So I'm going to say this is equal to A and B and C and 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 for product one so these are all product one that's why I have the one here in the beginning these are product two that's where the two is in the beginning so product one the number of units I ship for product one is going to be five right now I'm going to hit F4 twice or three times because I'm going to copy this to the right but I want it to follow this down as I copy it down you'll see why this works this way first in a second if I go this way and this way, you can see that I copied those. They copied them the same to the right, but didn't copy, but moved when I copied down. And that's because I put that dollar sign. I put the dollar sign on the B so it wouldn't move over to the right as I copied the right. I do the same thing here. I can go equals this. F4 twice or three times. And then copy it across. And copy it down, and and so five times the number of units I sell anywhere in here, plus four times the number of units I sell anywhere in the, in those areas, is going to be less than or equal to. What's it going to be less than or equal to? It's going to be less than or equal to the sixteen hundred pounds. And we can copy that down. Okay. So now we have this all set up and now let's just say we're going to guess we're going to say um, guess and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and I'll, let me move this down a little bit this is equal to these again so I'm going to guess the number of units right now right now I'll just guess one of each all right and if I if I use that as my guess then what I can do I can, uh, I'm going to calculate these again. And in order to calculate these, I'm going to go equals that matrix multiply. I'm going to multiply this array, right? And I'm going to take a times the transpose of this array. Now, if you've seen some of my other videos, uh, I highlighted the answer and then I hit Control Shift Enter. We well, don't have to do that anymore. That's something else that's new with Excel in the last year or so. If I just hit Enter, whoops, I forgot to spell transpose right. You got to spell the, the function correctly. So it automatically does a spilled array now. So before I had to highlight where it's the answer is going to be and hit Control Shift Enter. Well, I could still do it that way. 
but this so that's that's one way you can do it, is it so the equation lives right here and this is the way i used to show you how to do it you go equals m multiply this still works it's going to be these times the transpose of this and the way i used to show you do you hit control shift enter it does the same thing but now now you can see each one of these if you look up here each one of these has that living in it right has a so that's one way to do it the other way to do it is it gives you a spilled array and the formula lives right here you can do it both ways so i like doing it the new way it's a little bit easier so so if i sold one one of each one of these which you probably wouldn't do this is what you would get for a b and c and this would be your maximum profit right so we after obviously we didn't maximize so now we're going to make excel maximize so i'm going to go to data i'm going to go to solver and what we're going to do we want to maximize my profit right so that's b44 by changing the numbers i ship under each one of these so now we need to add some constraints we need to tell excel well how many can i ship under x11 which is the first this is the first 60 units right so i could add a constraint i could say that that x11 has to be less than or equal to 60 units I had another constraint. I could say x12 has to be less than or equal to the next 60 units, right? Not 100, not 120. It has to be. You can only like only shift. The way this works, it's going to maximize this first because because you're making 12 dollars here. So it's going to do these 60 first, and then if you had 15 more units, it's going to do it here. So you just need six. This additional units, not the. I hope that makes sense. Okay. And then I'm going to add this so over on this side. So I don't have to worry about this because after it does this and this, that it's going to start doing as many as it can here. All right. And then, so my next constraint is this it has to be less or equal to the first 35 units. And then this has to be less or equal to the next 35 units. And then I have to add some more constraints. I have to say all of these have to be less or equal to all of these, right? And if I go OK, and I have all those constraints in, we're going to click this. We can leave this nonlinear. It doesn't hurt. We go Solve. And it goes OK. And it, sell, it says to sell, sell that many of uh, product 1 and 35 of product 2. OK. So as you can see, it let us do partial units because the problem didn't say anything about doing whole units. Now, what I, if I would have wanted whole units, um, I would have said uh, I could have added another constraint. I could have said that all of these, right? Well, here's where my guess is: all of these would have to be an integer, right? And that would have made it force it to be whole units. But we're not going to do that because the problem didn't ask us to do that. So let's see if we got it right. Um, I'm going to take this down to not so many places. So what they get for an answer? So we could say product A. Well, let's go. Let's go ahead and look. Look at the way the answer, the way it looks like in the book. It says to do 116 and 35. So what is uh, uh 60 plus 56 is around 116, and that's 35, right? So um, plus or minus one unit. I would have said 117, right? Because 116.42, I would round it up. Okay. So you that 60 plus 57 is 117. You would still get it right because it gives you an answer tolerance. And this is how many of how many uh, how much how much product we used. So we didn't use all our product for product A. We maximized product. So we we're, we had a little bit of slack on product A and product B, right? We didn't use it all. We, product A and product C, we didn't use at all. If you go here, this is equals this minus this, right? So we had slack. So this would be called slack, right? So we had a little bit of product left, and we maximized our, we put this as profit right here. So anyway, so that that's the answer. It would be this, the sum of these two, and then product two would be that. So hopefully that helped. Hopefully I wasn't too confusing. Uh, 
I know I went kind of fast. If I, if I went too fast, remember this is a YouTube video, so you can rewind and, and do it again. Um, uh, my picture will come up if you like my if you like this video and you have a subscribe clip on my picture. It'll uh, subscribe you, hit a thumbs up, make any comments. So hopefully that was interesting. Thanks for watching. Bye.